Hello and welcome to another tutorial in which we will going to learn a little bit more about the CSS properties that we did not get to learn in the first few tutorials on CSS. We are going to review some of the concepts that we have already covered and on top of that we're going to introduce some new concepts. So I've set up a basic HTML page. As you can see the only thing that we did not talked about in the past that I have included in this code it can be seen on line number four. In the embedded style tag, I have introduced a property called type equals to text hyphen slash CSS. This is not required as far as the browsers are concerned. However, according to uh, the proper structure of the embedded tags, uh, embedded CSS, this should be written. So if you ever were to validate your HTML document with an embedded style sheet and missing the type attribute, it's going to tell you it's an error according to the validator. So it's always a good practice to follow the validation rules. So over here, we will going to work with some of the properties that we have worked with in the past, let means before. To start, I would like to start with a paragraph. So let's say if I'm putting out a paragraph over here with some text in it, like name, And now I'm going to put another paragraph over here. So here I have a couple of paragraphs that I would like to work with. Now some of the properties that we have learned in the previous classes uh, includes in the embedded, if I introduce a P tag and I use my selector and give it a color property and a color of red. So what this will going to do, will going to apply the red color to both of my paragraphs. And just as a review, let's have a look at it in the browser. Okay, and you will going to notice both paragraphs appear in red color. Now, we're going to learn one new thing. Let's say if I have a B tag that surrounds the word address. Okay, then I'm going to also throw in a B tag, which is used for bold. And this B tag, as you can see, is not a child of the paragraph tag. So we can use some CSS to differentiate between the B tag, which holds personal information, which is not the child of paragraph tag, and the B tag, which holds address, which is actually a child tag of paragraph. And child tag is the tag that is placed inside another tag. So uh, before the P got closed, the B got closed, and after the P was opened, the B was opened, so B is the child of P. So now in CSS, I can literally put out a property that says, if in a paragraph there appears a bold, then give it a color of blue. That means if there is a bold that is not in a paragraph, then it will not going to appear in the blue color. So let's test this. If I go under Run and Launch Internet Explorer, here you can see the word address appears in blue but the word personal information does not, even though they're both bold. The reason the address appears in blue is because of the CSS rule that I wrote that any B that appears inside the paragraph should be allowed to take this property. So that's basically how we can apply a complex CSS property like this. Then if you may remember, last time we learned also learned about ID uh, which is declared with a pound sign followed by a name of an ID. So let's say uh, anyone who gets this ID will going to get a font size of 12 points. Uh, let me increase it to let's say 14. So if I pick this paragraph and I say well this particular paragraph should be given an ID called inner effect. Then when I run this program, it will going to give me my paragraph, as you can see, 
This paragraph, which has named Sam Anderson, that appears in a larger font size than the surrounding text. If I increase the size further, let's say 18, so that uh, you could see it a little bit better, uh, you can see that Sam Anderson stands out, but uh, all the other text is in the default font size. Now, this was made possible by using an ID called Inner Effect. Now, let's say after this paragraph, if I decide to use a division tag, and in this division tag, if I decide to use an unordered list and list a few items here, such as Java, C++, C Sharp, okay? And I have decided to give this division the same ID of inner effect. And if I go under Run and launch it in an Explorer, the division ID down here has the same font size as the paragraph name Anderson. So, frankly speaking, this works. However, if you look at the HTML manuals and the rulings on HTML, technically, you are not supposed to give an ID to more than one tag. That's why it's called an ID, an identification. And an identification cannot be duplicate. Therefore, if you give this to a validator or a parser, it will going to point it out as an error that ID cannot be repeated. Well, the browsers understand it, so I can use it. Well, now they do, but what about in the future? If they stop that and start giving you an error, will you go back and fix all your code? Well, probably we should not, so we should always start right on the right foot. So if you have, for example, some bunch of properties that you would like to share with more than one tags, then we have another concept called class. Instead of a pound sign, it rather starts with a period. And instead of using an ID, you can now use a class and HTML validator will not going to complain about this. Even though it evidently it seems that it's working, I, I reduced the font size to 14. And you can see over here the difference that, yeah, it uses the font size 14. However, it works just like it was working before. And if I change it to 18, and if I come back to this page and refresh it, yes, it changes to 18. So that's what basically the class does. It allows you to apply the properties to more than one tags by following the rules in HTML. So in this tutorial, I wanted to introduce the idea of creating a parent-child relationship and the difference between an ID and the class. We will explore some of the other CSS properties in the next tutorial. See you soon.